Hello ladies and gentle pigs. I've been doing this YouTube thing for a while now and I think it's about time I did an owner's review or at least an owner's opinion of the Kawasaki Z900 RS or for my American friends out there the Z900 RS. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to have a good time. So this particular one is Nikita and we first met and fell in love in 2018. So they've been around for a while now and I'm sure anyone interested knows it's styled on the 1970s Kawasaki Z1000. Um, that was Kawasaki's flagship at the time and it really raised the bar for competing manufacturers. I guess the style isn't for everyone but being a child of the 70s myself I love it. So we have the retro style with modern characteristics, things like good brakes and handling. Uh, the suspension on mine is as it was when I bought it and it works pretty well. Uh, even when I do push it hard, it copes. However, it does feel a bit soft. So if you wanted to use it for track days or ride hard all the time, you'd probably want to play around with the settings or even make some changes. But I just tend to leave things and um, adapt. I did change the original Confidence Sapping Dunlops for some Michelin Road 5s which is a definite improvement although occasionally at a certain point a lean angle the front seems to chatter a little but nothing serious. Something I do love about this bike is its diversity. Uh, it can be a steady cruiser or a badass license loser. take my girlfriend on the back and she enjoys a comfortable ride so she tells me you can stack it with luggage and go touring which is what I'll be doing this summer with a trip of epic proportions to Spain under the uh, it's probably a bit overkill for commuting but hey whatever turns you on anyway whatever I use it for it feels at home although being a naked bike with a fairly upright riding position means sustained high speeds, uh, shall we say, hard work. But when I say high speeds, I mean well above the speed limit. So, of course, it's not an issue, officer. Okay, let's take a close look around the bike and I'll show you some of the changes I've made. First things you'll probably notice is the scaffolding for the hard luggage and I'm the first to admit it's ugly it really has spoiled the lines of the bike but it serves a purpose um, and it means I can go camping and take many beers Here you can see the heel plates which I think look really cool. I bought them for Christmas and it was like buying her a nice pair of earrings. You might also be able to spot the plug for the Oxford Maximizer battery tender. Uh, the exhaust is for the time being standard and it's going to stay that way at least until I return from Spain as I don't want to draw any unnecessary attention to myself with uh, Senor Policia. But it actually sounds pretty good stock. Now moving up to the handlebars, something that used to really annoy me is the brake fluid reservoir, but um, since I added the satnav mount and the chain oiler, it no longer seems to stick out like a sore thumb. The chain oiler is a Cobra or Cobra Nemo 2, which um, was recommended to me by a friend and it's a really nifty bit of kit. You just give the top a quarter of a turn and uh, it feeds oil through a pipe to the rear sprocket. Uh, so if you're watching, cheers for that Uncle Jesse. 
That takes away the hassle of carrying bulky cans of chain lube and as I have no centre stand I don't need to keep rolling the bike forward and spraying a few inches of chain at a time. Yeah, the only other changes that come to mind are um, a mount on the tank for a givy or jivy is it? 25 litre tank bag and the obligatory tail tidy which means if I'm caught out in the wet everything gets covered in spray off the back wheel including myself. Okay, let's have a look at it with the luggage on. So it's shad luggage, 36 litre panniers and a 39 litre top box. It takes seconds to fit or take off. Really solid and secure and once you lock it with a key, can't be opened or removed. So you should be able to leave your bike with some degree of confidence, fingers crossed. And it ain't pretty. In my opinion, no luggage looks good on a bike, but it is a game changer. So to summarise, uh, I'm almost 4,000 miles in and so far it's run like a Swiss watch. It goes well, handles well, stops well, it's comfortable, uh, the slipper clutch is really light, gear change is smooth and positive, uh, switch gear on the handlebars is simple and, and high quality. I love the analogue clocks with a digi, digi display in between. Now it isn't a sports bike so don't expect mental fast but I ride a, a Royal Enfield 500 single and an ER500 for work and winter and after riding those for a while and jumping back on this it feels mad as a box of frogs. Now I've had several bikes over the years and this is the first one I've bought brand new and I thought I might change it after a year or maybe two um, but I can't see it happening. I absolutely love it. So that's it, uh, my take on the Z900. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, fire away in the comments and I'll be happy to help you if I can. So take care, ride safe, ciao for now, bye bye.